Welcome to Church of the Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Holy Sacrifice for the Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Tom McKean. Please join in singing number 316. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things may attain your promises which surpass even our human desires. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. At this time, I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's liturgy dismissal. God asks each of us to give honor with our hearts. So as you listen to God's word this morning, may your hearts be open to the love that Jesus offers to us all. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant. Them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus' homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to give food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their master. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. When I was a kid, one of the things that would drive me crazy about my dad is he was very predictable. And now, all these years later, I've become my dad in so many ways. Dad had a lot of sayings, a lot of one-liners, if you will, and one of his favorites was, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And my brothers and sisters, that is the theme of today's gospel. My dad spent his career in law enforcement, and I have the utmost respect for those who serve us and keep us safe. Now, obviously, we know that there are some bad cops, and perhaps they should search another career. But we live in interesting times that certain cities are actually considering defunding the police. And so, according to this logic, if we had some bad politicians, should we defund them as well? Something to think about. So I'd like to share with you a true story. A man was on his way to bed, and his wife tells him that he left the light in the tool shed. 
She could see from the bedroom window, and he said, I hadn't been in the shed all day, and he looks out the window, and he sees two men stealing tools from the shed. So he calls the police, and they say that there's no one in the area, so no one would be available to catch the thieves. He says, okay, and he hangs up, and he counts to 30, and he calls the police again. Hello, I just called you a few moments ago, and because there were people in my shed, and well, you don't have to worry about them anymore because I just shot them. Within a couple minutes, there's a half a dozen police cars in the area, and they caught the burglars red-handed. And one of the policemen said, I thought you said that you shot them. He replied, I thought you said there was no one available. <laughs> so today's gospel theme is the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Jesus appears to be cold, even callous to the woman crying in today's gospel, crying for help. He refuses to help her by saying, quote, my mission is only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then he appears to insult her by saying, it's not right to take food from the sons and daughters and feed them to dogs. This follows the Jewish custom of speaking about the Gentiles as dogs. And so Jesus purposely spoke in a way that the Jews would expect their Messiah to speak. But then he turned the table on them. Because this woman had great faith and persists in her pleading for her child, Jesus heals her daughter. And so you and I, I think, can learn an important lesson from this lady who was concerned about her daughter. There may come a time when we need help for someone that we love. It may be a daughter, a son, an aging parent, a spouse, maybe a physical problem or a problem of emotions. Whatever our need or the needs of our loved one, it can certainly be frustrating getting anyone to listen. We might even feel like the whole world is against us. So let's learn from this mother who would not be turned away. First of all, the woman was persistent. And unfortunately, I think too many of us are too quick to give up when we need help the most. In Christ Jesus, all divisions and differences between people become irrelevant. You might remember St. Paul passage from the Galatians. There's neither Jew nor Greek, slave or free, male or female. All are one in Jesus Christ because God's mercy extends to all who call upon him in faith. As obvious as this seems, there have been people throughout history who do not want to recognize the equality of all people before the Lord. And now we have another disturbing trend that's gaining a foothold in this country, is the rewriting or altogether not teaching history in our schools. I think it's tragic that some in this country are okay with not teaching the events that led to the worst war in mankind has ever suffered, World War II. Nazis claimed that only certain people were far more blessed by God than others. Remember the terminology. If you're not a part of the Aryan race, you're automatically inferior. And so taken to its extreme, the Nazis had no difficulty in killing gypsies, Jews, and even Catholics. The Nazis claimed that gypsies, Jews, and Catholics were a burden to God's plan for mankind. Jesus Christ will not exclude anyone from God's love and mercy. Jesus turns the table in today's gospel. The Canaanites, the former enemy of God's plan, received a blessing from God. The Canaanites, who used to refuse the existence of God, became the most fervent of believers. The tables were turned. Pagans have become Christians. How many times have you seen converts who have become the strongest Christian witnesses? And those of us, Cradle Catholics, me included, 
who sometimes can take our faith for granted, our challenge to share the bread at the Lord's table. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us extend our compassion of Christ to all of our brothers and sisters who call out to him by faith. With his mercy and love, may it be so in our lives. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers and petitions to our Lord. For the church, may the Holy Spirit guide us in all things, helping us to observe what is right, and do what is just. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may the Spirit help to unite people across cultures, races, and religions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or suffering in any way, may they find comfort in God's bountiful mercy and in his compassionate care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for this faith community, may the Lord stir our hearts for beginning and ending all days in praise of his goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear for all who have died, may God let his face shine upon them and bring them to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people gathered here this morning. We ask all of these needs through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 514.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and all souls' church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. For you so loved the world that in your mercy sent us a Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored, to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks and exaltation as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Carl, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Please join in singing number 663.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ throughout these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to the image on earth we may merit also to be co-heirs in heaven who lives and reigns forever and ever. I have a few announcements. First of all, the men of the parish 18 years and older are invited to join together for a 13-week session starting Friday, September 8th, entitled, That Man Is You. The group will have breakfast at 545 in Spirit Hall each Friday morning, followed by a video and discussion until 7 a.m. There's a table in the gathering space with more information to get registered. Also, family faith formation registration is open. Classes begin September 6th. Please find the form in the gathering space and return them to the office when completed. And then finally, the Knights of Columbus are serving their annual back to school breakfast after this mass. So just follow your nose to Spirit Hall and there will be uh, French toast and sausage and there's also a free will offering. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Please kneel in prayer immediately after the hymn until the servers have returned the candles to the altar and have extinguished them. And please join in singing number 629. Yeah. 